Well, I can't believe that we now are coming to the very end of what's been our worship series these last six weeks. Um, we started this journey, it doesn't seem that long ago, and then suddenly here we are already at the end. Following that wilderness journey from bondage and slavery with the children of Israel through the wilderness, and now to this final place where Moses looks out over the promised land. It's taken a lot, it's cost a lot, it's invited a lot, and it's challenged a lot for us along the way. And so we remember all that it takes to travel through a wilderness time, a time just like we're living in now. That in the wilderness, you have to remember first that there is bread in the wilderness, but it just looks different. There are gifts here and now, but they look different than the gifts used to look. There is water indeed in the wilderness, but it's going to take some different tools to find your way to the water. And in the wilderness especially, you can't go alone, but we really have to call on the gifts of one another. Our plans are not going to serve us so well to find our way through the wilderness. However, we can count on our values to show us the way forward. And yes, the way through is not around our anxiety, but through it. And finally, we come to this end of the story and that call that we need to say yes to the gifts and yes to the promise that we will never fully see. And so let's listen for the word of God. We've jumped ahead from the book of Exodus to the end of the Torah, the first five books of the Bible. And here we are at the very end of the book of Deuteronomy. Listen for the word of God. And so Moses climbed from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, the peak of Pisgah facing Jericho. And God showed him all the land from Gilead to Dan, all Naphtali, Ephraim, and Manasseh, all Judah reaching to the Mediterranean, the Negev, and the plains which encircled Jericho, city of palms, as far south as Zor. And then and there God said, This is the land that I promised to your ancestors with the words, I will give this land to your descendants. I'll let you see it with your own eyes. There it is. But you will not enter it. Moses died there in the land of Moab. Moses, the servant of God, just as God said. And God buried him in the valley in the land of Moab opposite Beth Peor, and no one knows his burial site to this day. For the word of God in scripture, and for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. Amen. And Moses stood on the top of Mount Pisgah and he looked out there on the land of milk and of honey as was promised. Forty years of traveling and leading and guiding his people through the wilderness to get to this place. However, instead of a land flowing with milk and honey, it looked like a lot of rocks and desert and hard work before them to turn this land into any kind of promised land. Some years ago, somewhere there in the 1930s, a photographer 
stood on the top of Mount Pisgah here in Booth Bay Harbor. Took a picture, looking out there at the footbridge in the inner harbor below, connecting the east and the west sides of the harbor. A schooner there docked in the inner harbor and a little further out, a set of schooners rafted together. Here, on the top of Mount Pisgah, as Moses looked out to the promised land, Moses was told that he would die here, and indeed, he was buried here in this very place, looking out on that land of promise. And I just am reminded again today in getting to know you and my walk with you that many of you have come to this place, this place of promise and beauty, as Barclay remarked, because here is the place that you too have come for these last days, years of your life. Here is the place that perhaps you have said, I want this place to be the place, the last thing that I see before I die. Which has made me think these past days that perhaps we haven't talked about that enough, and perhaps that is an invitation of these days as well. It's unclear why Moses can't go into the promised land and why God says, no, you will never go there, but you will die here. It's an obscure passage in scripture, one that rabbis and biblical scholars have wrestled with over the generations. And it seems so unfair. After all this journey that Moses can't go into the promised land. And while I too have fussed with it, I've come as I've considered this passage over the years to see it as well as a gift. For you know, perhaps the gift is this, that Moses was no superhuman. He was no God. He was no somebody else that we could never be. He was a human being just like us, stumbling to find his way through the wilderness and on that way, making a way. An old friend of mine reminded me last year he said, I like old age because it gives me more time to consider and to ponder my regrets. I thought that was kind of a strange comment and maybe kind of depressing. But as I've thought about that, I think what Carl meant was this, that his, he takes out his regrets he ponders them and he holds them like the stone and he rubs them. And he sees that how in this stone and out of the regrets and the wounds and the disappointments of his past, this man that he is today has been made. And everything that is here has come in and through the regrets, the brokenness and the beauty of all that is. And you know, it's that time to take that time for reflection and contemplation that is key to making it across the desert. Now, I'm reminded as an interim pastor that many people just want to get through this time, <laughs> just get over this time because it feels like a waste of time, perhaps, to get on to when the real story will begin, when the real stuff will begin. But you know, Perhaps there's no there to get to. There's no there there. I mean, there are markers and there are endings and there are new beginnings, but that ending leads just to a new beginning and the journey begins and it goes on and on versus something just to complete perhaps an interim time just reminds us how we perhaps are to live in all of our time. Which has reminded me 
of these words attributed to Oscar Romero, the former Archbishop of El Salvador, that he wrote some 40 years ago. It helps now and then, he writes, to step back and to take a long view. The kingdom is not only beyond our efforts, it's beyond our vision. We accomplish in our lifetime only a fraction of the magnificent enterprise that is God's work. Nothing we do is complete, which is another way of saying that the kingdom always lies beyond us. No statement says all that could be said. No prayer fully expresses our faith. No confession brings perfection. No pastoral visit brings wholeness. No program accomplishes the church's mission, and no set of goals and objectives include everything. This is what we're about. We plant the seeds that one day will grow. We water the seeds already planted, knowing that they hold future promise. We lay foundations that need further development. We provide yeast that produces effects far beyond our capabilities. We cannot do everything. And there is a sense of liberation in realizing that. Because this enables us to do something and to do it very well. It may be incomplete, but it's a beginning, a step along the way, an opportunity for God's grace to enter and to do the rest. We may never see the end results, but that is the difference between being the master builder and the worker. We are workers not master builders, ministers, not messiahs. We are prophets of a future, not our own. And the truth is that our lives perhaps are like those little boats that we watch out there in the harbor. That someday, yes too, will pass over that far horizon. And as they go out and as they pass over, they leave a wake, <laughs> they leave a legacy, they leave this, they leave all of this. For we all ride on the wake of those who have gone before us. It was 400 years ago today that the pilgrims set out for that land of promise that they knew was out there somewhere. Their own land of milk and honey where they promised and wanted to build a city on a hill. And we, all of us, directly, indirectly, all of us, go in the wake that they left. Their wake of beauty, and their wake of brokenness, their wake of everything that they could see, and all that they could not. We ride on their wake. And Moses, and the story of the children of Israel that walked across the desert from bondage to freedom, from enslavement to promise, have left a wake as well that those who have longed for and hoped for and fought for civil rights, human rights, that all enslaved people have sung their way forward to following that trail. Today, for those who work for racial justice, for those who work for environmental justice, for those who work for a wider love and a deeper justice for all, they follow in the wake of that story, that hope, that promise, and finding that way. 
And you know, it's true for all of us. In the intimacy and the particularity of our lives, that finally what we will leave is this. We'll leave a wake. We'll leave a wake for all those who will come after us. We'll have to learn to find their way through. And for sure, they might have to fight their way through some of it, and they'll sing their way through some of it. They'll struggle through some of it, and they'll celebrate through some of it. But the work we do today, how we are today and how we live today, leaves a wake that lasts and stays. Yesterday, I drove to the top of Mount Pisgah here in Booth Bay Harbor. And down through a little cut in the trees, you could see still the inner harbor, and it was a glow in such sparkling light, so bright. And as I paused there, I gave thanks. I gave thanks for finding my way to this place and for the gift of being with you all these past seven months. This summer, so strange and full of such challenge and such particular gifts as well. I looked out at that harbor and I thought somewhere in this next year, my little boat will be moving on to another place and another harbor. And for some of you, it would be true as well. These past days, these months, this year ahead, and I've just thought all the more, just looking out there, how important it is. I mean, how especially important it is to give ourselves to love. I mean, not someday, but this day. To give ourselves to the love of those we are already saying goodbye to. I mean, to really give our heart to this work of our hands today. And to set sail and I mean that in the very particularity of what your day will mean today. Knowing that as you set sail into this day, however it unfolds, that you will leave awake. And a hope and a prayer that it be awake, that we leave of beauty and connection, of love and care and justice and hope is we set out towards a horizon, a glow in such incredible light, such marvelous light that we will never fully reach. Amen.